Hello, my name is Jorb, and I love gear. I'd like to personally welcome you to the second episode in my ongoing series, The Synthesis Guide to Guitar Pedals. This video is all about drive pedals. Part one was all about setup, power, stereo, and levels. So if you want a better idea of setting these things up on a bass level before you start to run specific sounds or make decisions about specific sounds, then you might want to check that out. But on to today's topic, drive pedals. Drive pedals come in a lot of flavors. I'm going to focus on the three main families, overdrive, distortion, and fuzz. And even if all, really, of my example pedals today were designed initially to be used with guitars, I think synths work well with drive pedals, and they deserve a little dirt too. I'll do my best to explain the differences between these flavors of drive, uh, aided by some visuals with my trusty oscilloscope. I'll be giving sound examples the entire time, and I'll try and call out any pedal-specific idiosyncrasies uh, as they come up, so you understand what's general and what's happening just because I'm using a specific pedal. Like a lot of things in the world of music gear, the terminology gets kind of tricky, and different manufacturers will use different names on the same controls or the same name to describe totally different things. When I speak generally about what game pedals are doing, I'll use terms like dirt, grit, drive. These don't mean anything specific. Uh, they're all, you know, my signal's messed up now. <laughs> uh, sometimes you'll see people say overdrive or distortion to describe gain pedals as a whole, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm going to do my best to be particular about my language, and overdrive and distortion are different. Drive pedals will often have controls named gain or drive or fuzz. We can consider those generally to be doing the same thing. Our signal's getting more messed up as we turn it up. Our effect is becoming more dramatic. Volume or level is something you'll see on a lot of pedals, and that is, you guessed it, a master level turning down the effect after we've changed the sound that's running through it, and tone. You'll see tone on guitar pedals all the time, and it isn't really consistent what it does, but it's some form of an EQ or a filter. Often, tone straight up will have no effect as you turn to the right. You'll gain more high end as you turn to the left, less high end. Sometimes it's different, sometimes it's a boost or a cut, but most of the time, a tone control is EQ. Now, that doesn't explain everything, but it is something to refer back to and uh, give us a baseline for when we have exceptions to move from. If drive pedals aren't really your bag, but you still want to learn about pedals with synthesizers, you should subscribe right now. <laughs> and uh, when I put out the modulation episodes or delays and reverbs, you'll get something out of that. Cool. Thank you for that. Back to the topic at hand, gain pedals. And you know what? I think any other concepts are going to be best explained while I'm going through specific examples. So let's move over to the table. Actually, not yet. This is mid-editing, Jorb. I'm very bad at self-promotion. I did not mention until the very, very end that I have a Patreon. There's a $2 tier just for support, $5 tier for sounds. Right now, it's just a Take 5 patch pack. And uh, I have affiliate links to Reverb and Perfect Circuit. So if at any point you're like, hmm, I wonder what one of those pedals costs, uh, you can check with my affiliate link. And if you buy something within a certain amount of time, I can get a kickback no matter what you buy. Okay. Now, <laughs> I'm glad I did my transitions like this because we can go right back to the content. How's that for a transition? <laughs> uh, we are going to step through the families of gain in the order that they get more uh, messed up. So we're going to start with overdrive, in general, the light to medium option for gain pedals. This is the Boss BD2 Blues Driver, my favorite on guitar, my favorite on synths. I've had this since, I think, 2015, maybe a little earlier. I don't even remember what made me choose it. I think it was in a group of pedals I bought, but but it's the first pedal I can remember really loving. I remember liking everything that it did to every instrument I tried to pair it with. Anyway, it is an overdrive, and I will show you how it sounds. We're going to start with something really clean, really sterile. This is the Nord Lee 2, 90s virtual analog. Just a sine wave. I'll turn it up a little bit, actually. Nothing crazy about it. Now let's turn the blues driver on. Sounds distorted. Sounds gainier, right? Let's talk about what we're actually hearing, though. If I turn the gain down, less different. And every time I add a note, you're getting a lot more level into the blues driver. It starts to distort a little more. You can see on the oscilloscope. Uh, baseless guitar man adjectives might include things like creamy, natural, or, well, 
bluesy. <laughs> but overdrive, as I'll talk about it today, and often as it is uh, described for pedals, is supposed to be the sound of an amp breaking up, the sounds of tubes saturating. And to be more technical, overdrive is most often associated with something we call soft clipping. To understand soft clipping, we need to talk about headroom. Headroom in pedals and amps and mixers and anything is how loud we can turn something up before it distorts. That headroom is a level, and if our that headroom is a level, can I get my hands up there? That headroom is a level, and if our signal gets louder than it, we'll hear distortion in, in one way or another. And so to understand the difference in styles of gain pedals, it's really to understand the behavior when you drive things past their headroom. And so here we have a demonstration. This is just a sine wave, and I'm going to turn up the master volume of our Nord, so we're going to drive more of a signal into the blues driver. You can hear it distorting a little bit more. We're going to level that out, level that out, excuse me, add a bit more gain. Still pretty close to a sine wave, right? Breaking up again. Let's add a lot more gain. At low volumes, got a sine wave still. And as I turn up, Gets closer and closer to a shark tooth. Even more gain. Volume even lower. So, as we drive past our headroom, let me try and get a visual for you here. I'm gonna use something to block it off. <laughs> I have a multiple within reach. So we're totally clean about there, right? That's about our headroom. And as I get louder than that, every place where the sine wave goes higher, oops, wrong one. Then we start breaking up a little bit. Then we start distorting a little bit. Okay? When our sine wave makes it to the headroom, to the level that'll start to distort, its character sort of persists for a little bit, right? Then as we go higher and higher, it's more and more different. And most of our exchange, and most of our change, or really all of our change, is at the extremes of the waveform. That's soft clipping. Soft clipping preserves more of the original character as you break past the headroom. And part of what's good about soft clipping is what we just saw it's responsive to dynamics. It's responsive to changes in volume. And I'm going to change my patch back to what it initially is. Pedal's off now. So this is how that pedal, this is a more complete moving patch. And this is that through the drive pedal. This sound, a very clean digital road sound, through a drive pedal reminds me of a band I saw in uh, Ames, Iowa years ago, Slingshot Dakota. <laughs> a great band, Rush style drummer, and then a woman who would sing and play uh, keyboards through gain pedals, and it sounded like that for a lot of it. Really, really like that band. Anyway, <laughs> that's my aside. Let's get a little faster decay on our amp envelope. So we can hear that as we decay, we're further and further away from going through the headroom, going through the point in the pedal where we distort. That makes it sound really dynamic. And I'm intentionally leaving out reverbs and delays because that would uh, complicate my oscilloscope and my examples of everything. And all I want to do is show you how these things sound. Cool. Uh, even if our synth is way louder than the guitars that you're designed to work with. We can find a combination of levels coming in, gain, distortion, whatever. 
that works and sounds good. Cool, love all that. Let's talk a little bit more about these specific controls. I talked about tone earlier. Actually, I want this to be sustaining still. So let's turn off our LFOs again. And get really gainy. Tone here on the blues driver is a passive non-resonant filter. And through other circuitry in the pedal, it increases your high end. So all the way open. It's our signal as it was distorted. About in the middle is a good place to stay. I normally point it towards the O. And leave it there. But on synths, I think it could go a little higher. Cool. And I know I said that uh, overdrives are typically low or mid gain, but I'm at a pretty high gain setting now. If I turn the volume way up on the synth, I don't think that sounds bad. It's a little muddy and serves a purpose. But I don't think these fall apart if you have the gain higher than 60%. Great, let's go to a slightly different sound. Let's turn off pedal. Get that back at a more reasonable level. Big shifting sort of a pad. Pedal's back on. Let's do slower attack on both envelopes. Whoops, <laughs> slower attack on both envelopes. You can hear it coming up into the headroom. I really, really like big slow pads through just a little bit of overdrive. Find more of a bass sound. I feel like 64. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A little more volume. Less tone. More gain. A little shrill. Those really flabby low notes doesn't know what to do. Let's turn on the ARP. I think I do that. Hold it. Thank you. 
bit of an offshoot. <laughs> that was almost like a uh, sequence kick drum. But there you go. There's another example of overdrive on a sound that, without distortion, isn't quite much. But with it, sounds really, really, really cool. That makes me want to do a drum machine special. So <laughs> you should subscribe for the Synthesis Guide to Guitar Pedals. Uh, the drum machine special. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I should move faster. <laughs> I got a lot to get through. This video is already going to be long. <laughs> I will consider that overdrive explained. Uh, and we're stepping up in our signal getting messed up business. <laughs> Let's make our signal even gnarlier. Let's move on to distortion. Alrighty. This is distortion. And in today's carefully chosen terminology, I will be using that mostly to describe circuits that are hard clipping, ped pedals that are hard clipping. Distortion is so named, I believe, because of two pedals, the MXR Distortion Plus and the Boss DS1, orange box, ubiquitous, you've probably seen them everywhere. There's probably one in your basement right now. <laughs> but I have the DoD Gunslinger here to demonstrate right now. I'll swap to another one later. The Gunslinger has gain and volume, which we learned about already. These are not the original knobs. I think I stole them to put on my Neutron or something. <laughs> but two EQ controls, a low and a high. So, shall we put things about at noon? That's our starting sound. Gunslinger's on. A relatively low gain. Okay, let's get a different sound. Kind of uninteresting otherwise. A little less volume. A little more gain. After. So before it's triangle. After, grittier triangle, all the way up you get points like a sawtooth. Let's lower the low end, so that was an overall volume loss. And a lot of the sortion is happening up in the high end. Let's use some of the same sounds I was using for uh, the overdrive, so we have a bit of a bass line. Oh, I'm just now looking at the readout on the camera, and that blue LED is super, super bright. I'm going to cover that up with a bit of tape. Hang on. That's a little better. Wow, I was just blasting that right into the lens. <laughs> Okay, overdrive was soft clipping, and distortion is hard clipping. So I'm going to get back to just our sine wave here. This is where we're at. I'm going to turn gain way down. I'm going to turn on the gunslinger. And notice now, even at a really, really low volume... There's almost no point where the sine wave sounds like a sine wave. Okay? The blues driver was working like an amp that was working too hard. That analogy does not work for hard clippers or the gunslinger. Hard clipping works by sort of artificially dropping our headroom. So we have a stage where we amplify our signal coming in, and that might be our gain control. I'm not sure about the gunslinger specifically but we're driving this set of diodes, and those diodes don't let any signal pass past a certain voltage. So as I turn up, we get a little closer to a square. I'm gonna turn down the low end. Actually, the low end for a note down there seems to be the entire sound. See, it seems sort of like a sawtooth here. But as I turn up the high end, we get closer to a square. Definitely a fucked up one. But what you really hear 
But what you see on the, the oscilloscope, what you're really hearing is the vertical changes. And so if you have two really clear vertical changes at the beginning and end of your waveform, that's more like a square. Okay, so the Gunslinger is a bit of an untraditional distortion, and I won't get to in the nerd chatter, but it's using uh, transistors as its clipping diodes, and so you get a little bit of sag, and more traditional distortion pedals would really, really clip it off. Uh, and it's a bit more dynamic than a lot of classic distortion pedals, so I'm going to change over to something that's a little more typical. This is an Ibanez Metal Charger. It has level and a distortion, which is just like our gain and our volume. But it has three other controls, and they are attack, punch, and edge. What do you think that means? I don't know. Let's check. Oh, my God. I think that's low end. Why is that so much? And that's high end. So I think it's an overall tone control, a low end, and a high end. Terrible, not responsive. But even already, see how close to a square we are? And even as I, as I go down, pretty quickly that's where we're at. So a little bit more like a square than we saw from the Gunslinger. Let's do our pad sound on this. This low end boost, what the f what is that called? Punch? <laughs> I don't know if it's because we're using a synth and there's way more low end. But that control is insane. This right here, sort of very fizzy. Distortion is what I think of when I think of distortion pedals. So, generally a little less dynamic than an overdrive, but that doesn't mean it has less range of gain. Oops, I want... Actually, let's reset that. This all the way up. Turn down my LFOs. This is still low gain. This is still something I... You could still consider some of these sounds low gain. They're just breaking up differently and earlier than the uh, than our good buddy the overdrive. And as we let the rest of that high end through, we're closer and closer to the square. And that's what's fun about coming at this from the synth world. We have a lot of terminology to understand what's happening on our... We, we can relate this back to waveforms, and seeing what we see on the oscilloscope makes a lot of sense to us already. Cool. So it is definitely still responsive to our volume. I don't want to cast overdrives as... You know, only I don't want to cast overdrives as the only thing that's responsive to volume or dynamic, and uh, distortions as not. I still think they are. It's different, and they keep less of the character of the original sound intact. And the Gunslinger is not a great choice because it's not traditional diodes. I believe that this is, and does what I would expect to see, which is get us pretty close to a square. When think about our blues driver, it was like a sign where the tops were sort of sawtoothy. And the gunslinger lived somewhere in between. Cool. I wouldn't necessarily recommend 
either of these. They just happen to be what I ended up with uh, keeping for my guitar playing years, my guitar playing era. Classic choices for distortion would be the Boss DS1, that orange box, or any version of the Proco Rat, which is one of my favorites. I wish I had an old one. Uh, Daft Punk, the kings of running synths through pedals. Uh, they're known to have used an MT2 Metal Zone, which is a really over-the-top, fizzy distortion. Uh, and a few photos exist of an Ibanez Fat Cat, uh, which is like this series, I think, a rat clone that they used at some point in time. Okay. <laughs> feel obligated to do this. <laughs> cool. I'll consider that distortion explained. Let's move on to the earliest guitar effect, fuzz. Fuzz, speaking generally, can get the most messed up. And they're the earliest examples of commercially available marketed to guitarists pedals. And fuzz can be broken down into a few family trees. I get a little nerdier than most, uh, but I have two examples of what people consider to be the two common archetypes. This first one is a fuzz face. I will show you a big muff later, but other family trees, because I have to mention them, <laughs> because they are different from the fuzz face. They are different from the big muff, the Maestro fuzz tone, the Fox tone machine, the Solo Sound Tone Bender, which is kind of one of the earliest overdrives. I could go on. <laughs> I'm nerdy about fuzz. Let's start with the fuzz face. I built this. This is a clone of the, uh, I think it's a Diaz Texas Square. I built it yesterday because I didn't have a fuzz face. Uh, and I tell you that because these things are so rudimentary, I can have a handful of parts and make some ill-advised substitutions and still have something come out on the other end that makes sound. Uh, no LED, because I'll know when it's on. So this is starting as a sine wave. And post fuzz. Ripping, tearing. I always like the descriptor of Velcro, actually. The fuzz phase circuit, uh, to oversimplify, well, both things, it's kind of like the blues driver in that it's transistors acting like amplifier stages. God, that is so noisy. <laughs> uh, but here in the fuzz phase, they're, driving, they're being driven way too hard, and the feedback loop is really, really dramatic. And so on guitars, way, way less clear here, but on guitars, a fuzz face at lower gain settings... will respond to your dynamics. But this is so, driven so over the top. Won't give us much of that. Great. Uh, because it's working like that. It's working like an amplifier. But since they're driven so hard, you get your headroom kind of so low that you almost get... Like that square wave. So let's do like we've been doing, just a sign. Yeah, that really is like a low pulse with square. <laughs> it really struggles with polyphonic playing. Uh, that's all there really is to say. About this, it's super noisy. I want to get my levels back to a good spot. So we're going to move on to the next archetype of fuzz, a Big Muff Pie. This sucker is huge. <laughs> this is one of the Big Muff, one of the Big Box Big Muffs. Uh, you have three controls here, volume, tone, and sustain. And sustain isn't sustain as we know it in synthesizers. Sustain here is like our distortion amount. So let's, so we're starting with just a sine wave.
really immediately, almost unchangingly like a square wave. And sustain as I change it down, which well, I'm going to call it gain. Only at the very, very bottom, we have a clip of something that might be identified as uh, close to our sine wave. More dynamic sound. Uh, before I forget, this Big Muff is borrowed from Buddy Chase. If you remember the way back when uh, Moog Sound uh, blindfold test, Chase was the guy who helped me. And I'm going to link below to his podcast, which is about our local music scene and his personal music project that he puts so much of his life into. Okay. The Big Muff is not really designed like a fuzz face at all. It's more like two distortion sections. It's more like two distortion pedals. There are four stages of amplification. One where you come in that is not any of these controls. One right in the middle of the distortion section, which is our sustain. One at the end where we have our um, volume control, our master volume control. And there's a tone control in that last stage as well. Which again is a filter. And this filter seems to have a wider range than the other EQ controls we've seen today. I think it's cutting lows as well as boosting highs and cutting highs as well as boosting lows. So I think this is more like you're shifting your mid frequency. Cool. So it's two of those hard clipping distortion sections. Uh, sustain is so labeled sustain because the higher you turn it, our hard clipping stages get lower and lower and they can latch onto a softer and softer signal and they can distort it into our square-ish sound earlier and earlier. So even as the sound decays over time, which I'll turn off our LFOs, It can latch on to even really, really quiet sounds. Cool. I don't love the sound of the Big Muff on synthesizers, uh, but I had to bring it up if I was going to talk about fuzz at all. And that smooth distortion might be exactly what you're looking for. I feel obligated again to do... Okay, I feel obligated to do that with all these because that's a lot of what I think of. I think of that. Um, I think of Daft Punk. I think of that uh, 303 thing. You know, a 303 high resonance, uh, some accents driven through distortion. Anyway, it's a little cliche at this point. So there we go. There's sort of your first look at all of these different families of drive. But there are also pedals that have characteristics of all of these. My favorite example. My favorite example of that is the small sound, big sound, mini. It is technically in overdrive, but you can get it to show you examples or have characteristics of all three of the types of gain we talked about today. It is in overdrive first and foremost, but it has enough gain on tap to sound like a distortion. like the big buff here and that it's just unrelenting but this bias control changes how much voltage you're running the uh, drive circuit at which will in effect lower your headroom dynamic sound again That's getting spitty like the fuzz face did. Because if you think of what I described earlier, fuzz face is like the blues driver in that it's acting like an amplifier. This, I think, is similar to, and at really low bias, we have even lower headroom. And so instead of having extra gain on those stages, like the fuzz face, we have less headroom. 
and this can behave like that. And in the middle bias, and with middle gain setting, and maybe less dramatic EQ. We're like our blues driver again. Cool. I love the small sound, big sound mini almost as much as I love the blues driver, but it is my favorite example of a really, really flexible drive. Its controls have the range. It sounds good in most situations, and it can be manipulated to give you those characteristics of any of those other sounds. And I bring it up now at the very, very end to help sort of stick the landing of this, my overarching conclusion. So there you go. When used with synthesizers, gain pedals can add a lot of character and different pedals and different flavors of gain do sound different and do react differently. But I don't think it's really worth getting worried about that final mile minutia that might matter if you were using a guitar with these things. If you want a specific sound like you would get from the Metal Zone or a Big Muff, then buy one of those. It'll make the sound you want it to make and you can be happy with that. But if you aren't after a specific sound, then hopefully this video gave you a good reference for the three big families of dirt, overdrive, distortion, uh, and fuzz, and you should get something cheap and versatile in the category that works best for you or you think will best fit your gear and the music you're trying to make. So there you go. That's it. My name's Jorb. I love gear. I love synthesizers. This blues driver changed my life. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. I have a Patreon. Try a bunch of shit. If it sounds bad, don't do it anymore. <laughs> so long. Hope to see you in the next one.